When we purchased our home, it was previously a rental property, and so it took a lot of work to get it into the state that it currently is. The first thing we did is we remodeled the kitchen, and then we painted the entire house. During this process, we found a bunch of different sensors. So here's one of them. This is a door sensor, and then there were some other motion sensors around the home. Well, at the time, I had no idea what they were, so I didn't like the way they looked. I just took them off the wall. Um, also, right here by my thermostat, there was a alarm system um, there, big panel. I took it off, filled the hole, because I was like, I don't know what this is for. I don't know if it works, and so I just decided to remove it. Well, today's video is all about how you can prevent yourself from taking off all that stuff in a new home or a home that you purchase and how you can repurpose those sensors to your current smart home. And that's all thanks to a company called Connected. So this is a connected Wi-Fi circuit board that allows you to use the existing sensors that you have in your alarm system or you can actually integrate it into your smart system and then it can work with smart things so that you can receive notifications of doors opening or people in rooms and it can be fully integrated into your smart home. So today we're gonna to test out the connected product, see how it works and show you how you can prevent yourself from ruining your system and how you can save money by using the sensors that are already there. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So Connected did provide me with this kit to test out um, so that I can make this review. Now, before I get into it, I do wanna mention there are two different types of kits. This is the conversion kit. So this will allow you to convert your old alarm sensors with uh, new smart home platforms like SmartThings or Home Assistant. Habitat, or you can get the interface kit. So the interface kit allows you to use a current working alarm system and integrate connected into your system so that you receive notifications and you can kind of control some of those things. Um, connected has made a video all about using the interface kit. So I'll leave that at the end of this video that you can check out, but this is going to focus on the conversion kit that will allow you to convert a non-working system, but you have sensors, into your smart home platform. So inside the box here, the starter kit does cost $99. So I think it's a pretty valuable um, buy, especially if you can get three to four sensors working, because um, it's gonna cost you about $25 to go buy a SmartThings motion sensor. So if you're able to replace a few sensors, I think it's pretty good value there. So inside the kit here, we have a 12 volt power adapter that you will use to plug in. Then next we have the six zone Wi-Fi alarm panel with siren output. And then here we have the accessory kit. So the kit here has some labels that you can label your sensors. Here you have a little screwdriver to um, put them onto the panel. And then here you have some stickers, some mounting standoffs, a piezo buzzer, and then you have some other cables, jumper cables that you will need. And then here inside the alarm kit, so here we have the Wi-Fi board and some instructions. And then here you have the installation guide. So I don't know much about my alarm system, so I'm gonna be following this and kind of take you along my progress in getting this all set up. So let's head on over to the panel and see what we have to work with. So at first, I really had no idea what this is, um, but exploring this a little bit, I have wires everywhere, but I found the power cable over here. It's just wires, it's not plugged into anything, so that's pretty useless right now. And that's why this conversion kit is so cool. So inside here, we have a mess, but we got a battery, we got a few panels. So it's what I did is I have been kind of researching what these are, so I just Googled any of the um, numbers that I found on the panels to look up a bit more about what they are. Um, this, I think, is what allows you to connect into the telephone line, and then this allows you to uh, set up with a speaker. And then here we have our different zones and the different panel. Um, so this is where everything works off of, and then this is a battery to power it if your power does go out. So essentially is what we're doing is we're taking off any sensors that are on this panel and we're going to be pulling off those wires and putting them onto the connected panel so they are then able to be connected to the internet and show up in smart things. So this old panel will be pretty much useless. And then over here we do have a diagram. So this diagram is going to help us to know what the zones are so that we can then connect the jumper cables to the right zone and then we can connect our connected device and have everything working properly. 
Connected will work with the following items, door and window contacts, motion sensors, glass break detectors, leak detectors, smoke detectors, PE beam detectors, alarm siren, and strobe light. So quite the list of sensors that are available. Now this also comes in a six zone, 12 zone, 18 zone, or a 24 zone pack. So number one is an expansion port interface for accessories. Two, you uh, can press that to reset. Three is the Wi-Fi chip and antenna. Four is mounting holes, it fits an M3 size. Five, you have a reset button if you hold for 10 seconds. Six are zones one to six. And then it says zones one through five can be used with 3.3 volt outputs. Seven is shared ground terminals. Eight is switch alarm siren negative. Nine is supplies constant auxiliary power to connected red wire or siren. 10 is ground connection for aux powered devices. 11 is the power input. 12 volt to 24 DC. And then 12 up here, we have micro USB port for servicing firmware or advanced debugging. Now let's take a look at the instructions. So there's really not much to it here. So here it takes you to the website and gives you some more info, but it kind of skips exactly how to put the module on your old panel. So hopefully I can figure that out and show it to you. And then it covers how to get it set up with your smart home really well. But um, in here, it's pretty simple on the instructions. So there's everything that we just talked about. And then here it talks about how you can add motion sensors. So this is able to power motion sensors. And then here it is able to run a siren or a strobe. So looking at my system right here, now here is the wire for my speaker. So following the wire here, it just leads over this way and uh, it goes to a dead end. And I'm pretty sure I removed the siren when we moved in. So that's gonna be pretty pointless, but it's nice that they did include a speaker that you could use. Now next is we have the different zones here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the different sensors. So I could follow these and see where they go, but we're just gonna go start setting them up and including them into here and then we'll see where they actually go to once we get this set up. And then it's pretty much gonna make the rest of this obsolete. Since I've already broken half the system, it's pretty useless. So we're just gonna make use of the sensors that I do have. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to wire those into the connected alarm panel. And it does mention that you do need to make sure that you mount this outside of your box because the Wi-Fi signal can't go through there. So we're gonna mount it up here or something and uh, then run the different wires through there. So let's go ahead, start unscrewing these. Now again, there's no power, so I don't have to worry about that. We're gonna take them off here, put them into here and then see where we go. So since we're only worried about this portion right here, these are the different zones. So this is the power cable, don't need to worry about that. And then next we can see that we have the red and black. So that's the auxiliary power. And then we have the green and yellow cable here. Now it does mention that you can just remove any of the resistors here. So that's important if your system's working, but we don't need that for my install. So I'm just going to pull this off and connect it to one of the zones and then we'll move to the next one. While I'm taking these off, let me teach you about what I learned about home security systems. So here I have the black and red cable. Those are all bunched together with all the different sensors and panels for the security system that is giving power to the different devices. Then over here, we have different zones. So you can see the number six and seven and eight. So six and seven is a zone, eight and nine could be a different zone, all depending on the panel you have. So one zone is essentially one sensor. So right here, this is one of my zones or one of my motion sensors. So we have the red and black power cable, then we have the green zone cable, and then we have the ground cable. So that is how I'm going to wire these into the connected panel. So since I have multiple sensors here, I'm going to put all the black cables together, all the red cables together. I'm going to put the green in its own zone. So that will be the zone number. And then I'm going to put the yellow in a ground. And then that will give power to the sensor and then I will go through and connect the connected device to Wi-Fi, and we'll add those sensors into the system. Now, because this is the six zone connected device, I can have six different sensors, but if you have more sensors than that, you will need to go and buy a larger panel for however many sensors you have. 
Now before I started taking everything off my original panel, I did use the labels to label what they were. And it looks like I actually only have three sensors in here that I need to move into the connected panel. I now have my three different zones separated. So I'm gonna take the aux wires, put them together, and then I'm going to take the ground cables and the uh, zone cable and put them into the proper zones on the alarm panel. Before you wire your connected panel, I would suggest removing the wires outside of the panel so you can still close it and it looks nice and then you can wire these directly into the connected device. I don't have any experience of doing it the wrong way so I wouldn't know about that. But here, now we are ready to put these in the proper place. To connect the wires to the panel, just place them into where they belong and then you will screw the flathead screw on the top until it is tight and proceed until you have all your zones placed. Now for the rest of the zones, um, again, I have the red and black up here and then the green for my system was the zone wire and then the yellow or uh, the white beige here was for the ground. So for zone one, it's in the greens in one and then for the other zones, there you have the two ground for zone one and two. Then here we have the green for zone three. So for the alarm, here I use the jumper cable. I use the green here, and the green is going right into the red um, auxiliary, so the plus auxiliary. And then I use the blue wire here, and the blue wire is going there into the alarm. So that's how I ended up wiring it for it to work. Now that we have everything wired, it's time to plug it in and get it all set up. Now the main problem is just finding a place to plug it in, but don't worry, one spot left. So before we head into the connected application, actually is how we're going to connect this to Wi-Fi is going to our Wi-Fi settings. And then here you will see the connected Wi-Fi network. So we're going to select that. And then we are going to go to the browser and navigate to 192.168.4.1. Once we do that, it then gives us the option to put in our Wi-Fi network. So here we're going to choose the Wi-Fi and then type in the Wi-Fi password. Then we're going to save that. And now it is connecting to the Wi-Fi network. And you can see that over there, the light stopped blinking. Now we need to press the reset button or unplug it and plug it back in for it to reconnect. Now we're going to head into the connected application, select refresh down here, and there it found our connected device. It is now set up. Now if you do have a bigger alarm panel, you will wanna make sure that you set up each module one at a time. That way you don't get confused at which one you are connected to. Now I'm going to select register this device, create an account, and then register my connected device to the connected cloud. And now it is giving me the option to assign zones. So start adding zones by tapping the plus icon at the bottom. So here we're gonna select plus and we're gonna choose the zone number. So let's go with zone one and zone type. We're going to choose door sensor. I know I have three door sensors. So we're gonna go ahead and choose door sensor and we're going to name this family room. Select save, and then we can sync that to the device. The device will reboot shortly and reconnect the, to the connected cloud. I'm now gonna go through the process of adding my other zones, choosing what type of zone they are, and then giving them a name. Next, we're going to add our alarm. So here in connected app, we're going to add a new zone. We're gonna select zone number, and here we have alarm out. And then for zone type, right here we have siren. We're gonna give it a name, we're gonna call it alarm and then we're going to select save and add it into our zones. Now, when we go back, here you can see we have an out for the alarm. Now let's add these into SmartThings. So we're just gonna head into the SmartThings application. We're gonna select the plus, we're going to add a device, search for connected, and then once we find connected, we will just need to sign in with our connected cloud account that we created earlier. So first I choose the room I want them to be in, and then here we need to sign into our connected cloud account to sync those zones to SmartThings. So now we can close this page and back on the home screen as we scroll down, here we will see the different sensors. Now if they don't show up, just wait a minute and they should refresh and be in here. All right, now that we have the connected alarm panel set up, let's go ahead and go into our room here and see if our sensor is working. So I'm just going to pull open the SmartThings application. Here you can see in the bedroom, no motion. 
and let's start moving. So there you can see it said motion detected and there up in the corner, you can see that is where our motion detector is. So again, move around and there it says motion detected. If we move out of the room, no motion detected. So now let's go and check the other sensors. So over here, this is where I have uh, one of the door sensors I talked about in the beginning. Um, so let's go to that sensor. So door sensors, currently it's saying that it's open. It's not open, let's see. Open it up, no change. So actually after looking it up, these door sensors are not compatible. They are using a wireless signal. They are not wired to the old alarm panel. So they aren't compatible with the connected system. A bit of a bummer. I was hoping I would be able to get more sensors out of this. Um, I do have one more spot where I could add a sensor. Um, that's actually where I ended up ripping it off. So I don't have a ton of sensors that came with this, but if you are in a house that does have a lot of sensors, I think this is really a great option because it's gonna do so much. And what is it gonna do? Well, let me show you what you can do when you get one of the sensors to work within the room. So here in the bedroom, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is create an automation. So when it detects motion, it's automatically going to turn on some of the lights. So let me show you how to do that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head into Smart Things and we are going to set this up so we can actually use our Smart Things to interact with our motion sensor from Connected. So is what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create an automation where it automatically turns on the lights when motion is detected. So I'm gonna come in here into my automations and right here, I have already set them up. So right here, I have one called motion detected. So what this does is if the bedroom motion sensor right here detects motion, it's then going to turn on the two lights in this room and it's going to turn on the light strip over here. So then I'm going to create another one where if there's no motion in the bedroom, it's then going to turn off the strip lights and it's going to turn off the lights in the room. And then I'm gonna have it so if there is no motion detected in the bedroom, it's then going to turn off the lights. So let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, the lights turned off. Come over here. And the lights turned on. Now it is a little bit sensitive. I don't know if that's just the motion sensor. So when I'm moving around, let's see. When I'm moving around, it stays on, but then when I'm not moving, there it goes, it turns off. Got me. All right, now let me show you the next option in which you can set up a home alarm in SmartThings. So here in my SmartThings menu, I'm going to go to Smart Apps. Under Smart Apps, I'm going to select Plus and here we have SmartThings Home Monitor. So this will allow you to use the sensors and devices you have within SmartThings to set up a home alarm system. So here are the different sensors it can use. Um, it can also monitor smoke and leak detection and other things depending on what devices you have. So here we're gonna go next. So here at the top, now we have the option to set up the security system. So the first thing we're going to do is choose what sensors turn or arm the security system. So if we come in here and turn off all sensors, we can go in and then choose what sensors are available. So right now for door sensors, all I have is my front door. So I could enable that. And then here we have motion sensors. So I'm gonna turn that off. And then here we can see the motion sensors that I have within my home. And here we're just going to choose the bedroom as what enables the security system. And then down here, we have use all sound sensors for monitoring sound. So if we turn that off, um, there's no options available there because I don't have any sound sensors. So I don't have a glass break sensor or anything like that. So if we go next, now we're going to choose what is armed when we are at home. So we have two options here. We had armed away status, and then this is armed stay. So maybe when I'm at home, I only want my security system um, to enable the windows or certain different devices. So you can choose all that here. We're just going to leave it how it is. And then next, we're going to choose what happens when the alarm goes off. So when it does detect motion. So here we have sirens. Here we have the option to choose our alarm tied into connected. If you had other alarms, you could do that as well, but we're going to use the connected alarm here. And now we have the option to choose how long that is going to alert us. So I'm just going to choose one minute. And then here we have the option 
to set a delay before the alarm starts. So it's default 30 seconds, but I'm gonna select no delay. So as soon as motion is detected, it is then going to go off. Then you have other options where you could record a video, you could turn on lights. So let's go ahead and turn on the lights that are here in this room. So I just need to find them here. So then here we have, so in this room right now, I have the basement hallway lights set up in here. So we're gonna select done. And then we could go through and set up if we want them to be dim or a certain color. If you have those options, you could play audio notifications, send text, and then you can have delayed time and you can turn on push notifications for your phone. So that all looks good. So I'm going to select done. And now we have set up our security system. I'm not going to go into smoke and leak detection today, but uh, that's all we need to do. So when we're done, we're gonna head back here and now you can see the SmartThings Home Monitor is now here in my smart apps. And when I go back to my home page, now you can see that I have the security system right here where I can arm it, away status, arm or stay, or disarm. So let's go ahead and arm, and then let's see if it can detect us. Well, that definitely works. Just took a little bit longer um, than expected. Maybe it's just the position of the sensor, but the alarm is certainly going off. Now, when the alarm does go off, you can just head back into the uh, SmartThings application, and right here I have the option to dismiss that alarm. So then when I select dismiss, it turns off the alarm, and then you can go and see who broken your home. Now I do want to mention one big benefit of having a security sensor like this or maybe door sensors that are wired. With the connected system they are always powered. If you have a SmartThings motion sensor it is battery powered. Now if it runs out of battery power SmartThings does not notify you so you could have a sensor sitting there that isn't going to notify you if somebody breaks in. So having a system wired through connected really adds a lot of benefits. Now, after spending a full day with the connected alarm panel, I would say it's a great addition to any smart home. Now, for me, it was a little bit of a problem that I had previously removed a lot of the motion sensors and that my door sensors aren't compatible with it because they're wireless. So I would definitely recommend going and looking at your alarm panel that you currently have, seeing what sensors are available, and kind of learning a bit more about that so that you know they will be compatible with Connected. Um, now you can go onto Connected's website and search through their help form to see if certain devices would work. That's how I found out that my door sensors wouldn't work, so I'd recommend that you do that. But if you have a alarm system just sitting there, this is a great way to introduce those sensors into your smart home. I think it's really great that now I have it connected to smart things and I can use this sensor for all kinds of things. I think I'm gonna head to eBay to find some maybe cheap motion sensors to put where I am missing those, where I cut them off to enhance what my smart home can do. If you have any further questions about the connected alarm panel, please let me know in the comments below. I'll also leave a link to their product in the description so you can go and check it out. And I'm gonna to put together a little playlist of videos about connected that I would recommend watching whether you wanna use the conversion kit or the interface kit to uh, convert your current alarm system to a connected system. And I'll leave that right over here. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.